What's the outlook for Clay and Kenny practices? Clay Matthews, uh, he'll be in the uh, rehab group. Hopefully, uh, move to trial return uh, today will be the goal. Uh, Kenny, uh, Kevin. Kenny. Oh, Kenny Clark. Uh, Kenny, Kenny, same, same, same classification. Is that still the same plan with Aaron Jones? I think you mentioned that on Monday. Um, he's uh, he, he's in the rehab group, potentially trial return. We'll see. See how he works. He'll be with the rehab group today. Can you get even more out of Jamal Williams and is he ready to, to carry even a greater load if you ask him to? I mean, he was, he got a lot of touches and was really productive. Uh, I, I thought he, I mean, that was a pretty big load. I mean, it's, uh, I think Jamal has proven himself. Uh, obviously, we played him all three, uh, you know, all, all three downs. Uh, I thought he was excellent in the situation, opportunities he had. But yeah, he's 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 definitely, uh, I would say, his numbers the last game re- reflect that of a feature back. Is it? I know we talked about this earlier with Ty too. Is it maybe too in a perfect world? Would you like to have fewer reps for you? I mean, he has played quite a bit just from a sheer snap count. I know it's out of your hands in some regards. But. Yeah, I, I think it's like anything. It's it's, it's, it's the course of the season. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, players are working, preparing, and they all want opportunities. And I think really the, the focus for Jamal is he's been given more opportunities and and, and is, has been extremely productive with it. So uh, with that, you, you keep moving forward and keep giving him the, the chances that he's earned. So, I mean, our, our health – and you know, particularly the running back group. I mean, it's uh, it speaks for itself. So we just we just got to keep playing. Like when you just talked to Dirk uh, Cutter on the conference call. You know, he was talking about Brett Hundley and saying you know, the difference between the Baltimore game and the, and the Pittsburgh game in terms of his performance and what you prepare for is the Pittsburgh game because you've seen that he can do it. From your guys' standpoint, how do you try to avoid the you know the highs and lows with him and, and get the get him to play at a level consistently? Well, I mean, there's there's always things you know. You get into the details of uh, the why, you know, why were, why were we successful? What, you know, the plays that we weren't successful. So you you, you stay on top of that. Uh, but I, I think it's like anything in this league. You you have to handle the highs. Um, I don't really I'm, I don't really concern myself when players go through a low because I mean you're, you're talking about. Um, character and, and, a, and a, a National Football League football player. I mean, these guys are going to respond. They're always going to respond to challenges. Uh, they're, it just, it's just part of who they are. So, and, uh, you know, we talked about it uh, last week where, you know, having a little success coming out of Chicago, you know, you know pushing the envelope a little bit against Baltimore, get yourself in, in trouble there with the, with the turnovers. I thought he did a great job in, in how he responded. Uh, uh, playing against Pittsburgh, so um, we just got to keep moving forward. We uh, he has more to give, and, and we need it. Jamal had some big gains Sunday that he hadn't shown previously in games. Did any of that surprise you, or had you seen that kind of burst on film already? Uh, Jamal has really, if it, to answer your question, no, I wasn't surprised by it. If you you go back to training camp, and uh, you know he was he was the lead guy in a, in, the, in that rookie class. So and and, and that was for a reason. So uh, yeah, I, I think he's. Getting more comfortable, um, you know. We're doing more things with him, and but uh, he's a he's a complete he's a complete running back. Like, what have you thought of Richard Rodgers as his snap counts have gone up the last couple of weeks? I can't say enough about Richard. Richard Richard is uh, he, he he does all he does all the little things, you know, the things that don't show up on the stat on the stat sheet. Um, so I, I thought he did some really good really good things in in the Pittsburgh game. So uh, very very pleased with. Not only the way he's re- responded to his opportunities, but you, you look at you know, here's a guy that's played a lot of football for us, and then wasn't playing a whole lot uh, earlier in the year, and just he just he's the same. He's the same man every day uh, as far as work ethic. He's always available. I mean, his availability is uh, is exactly what you're looking for, and uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see him get some opportunities. Mike, you know, in training camp from the sideline, he had ran so much nitro. And it looked like maybe Blake's rule wasn't clear, at least to us. I'm sure you had a plan for him. But, you know, he's really emerged during these 11 weeks. Did, did his role shift? Um, and, and what do you think of what he's done for you this season? Well, I mean, I think Blake's having a heck of a year. I mean, you, you always talk about the, the leap from year one to two in, in, 
And that's what that, that's what you're looking for. That's exactly uh, the, how you want to see guys you know, come, come back and take advantage of the opportunities. Now, as far as you know, what personnel or group are playing over another, I mean, game planning has a lot to do with that. You know, production of opportunity has a lot to do with that. So, I mean, I think it's clear that you know we you know we want to keep Blake on the field. How do you handle their quarterback situation? Do you have, do you prepare for both, or how do you how do you view that? Um, um, it's not uncommon, uncommon to, to be, you know, sitting here, you know, not really sure who's going to play, but, you know, I, I think their practice today will probably answer that question. Uh, but, you know, they're still conceptually going to, you know, be the same or similar. So uh, you get more into not, you know, what they're doing. Um, it's it's really the, the second part, of, particularly in the drop back, you know, you know how they scramble, they stay in the pocket. Mannerisms, you know, how they handle a line of scrimmage, cadence may sound different from one to the other. Uh, but I mean, it, there's, they're going to run their offense, so uh, you just prepare for both guys. What jumps out at you on film about this offense, Mike, and, and their, their, their weapons in the passing game? You see a lot of well, big time weapons. I mean, obviously, I mean, just if you just look at the size and athletic ability of their of their perimeter group, I mean, big targets make for a more accurate quarterback. I mean, I, I think that's. Stating the obvious, uh, but obviously a focal point for us defensively. Mike, is it getting to the point now where Josh Jones is becoming a liability on special teams because of all the penalties? I wouldn't say he's a liability, um, but but Josh needs to be more disciplined with the with the penalties, particularly the second reaction penalties that that uh, have occurred. So um, it's part of his growth. Uh, but yes, you know we're in, we're into the you know this is the real fo- you know real football here coming into the fourth quarter. So. Um, I am confident that he has learned from his past mistakes. How big a focus is uh, ball security this week, considering how many fumbles they forced and recovered? Um, it's, it's a focus every week, but you know, it's good that you're reading the stats. Um, I appreciate that. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, we do the ball security drills. We, we'll, we'll, we'll do the same, and you know, and it goes both ways. You know, we, we got to continue. Uh, we're getting our hands on the ball in the passing game, but. You know, getting the fumbles out, uh, especially you know this time of year. I, I guess the weather's going to be pretty nice Sunday, but yeah, definitely it's it's, it's a focus. Like you, you always put so much into messaging. Can you kind of share what your message is with the guys right now? I mean, you, we talked about six losses at the, at the beginning of the week. Really, today, um, you know, coming off a Sunday night game, uh, you know, they they were in here working Monday just as far as uh, in the weight room and things like that. So today, today is the first time I saw them. We we, we uh, broke up our meetings today. We went back and, and looked at the Pittsburgh game, corrected that. So we, you know, we talked about that, and and then frankly jumped into Tampa because you know, just with so much to do today. Um, so, you know, we'll get more into the specifics of, of the messaging, but that, it, it it's clear. I mean, we we have to win, so that's what we're focused on. Mike, is it frustrating or disappointing at all when a veteran player like Lance Kendricks has an issue with marijuana versus a young player like Aaron Jones? Well, I think it's like anything, you know, uh, people, people go through life. Uh, there's, there's, there's things that, that happen. Uh, you, you learn from it. So uh, that's no different for Lance.